Hi guys! So today, we are going to learn about dihybrid cross. When we talk about dihybrid cross, we are interested in seeing how two characteristics are inherited together across the generations. For example, how height and flower color are inherited together across the generations, or how seed color and seed shape are inherited together across the generations, etc. etc. Let's say we are crossing a pure breed, tall round seeded pea plant with a dwarf wrinkle seeded pea plant. Although the homologous chromosomes separate during meiosis, but since these two individuals are homozygous for both genes, there are only one type of gamete that can be produced. Big T, big R for this individual, and small t, small r for this individual. Therefore, you just write down one arrow only. As you can see, all the F1 generation will have dominant phenotypes, in this case being tall and round seeded. However, all will be heterozygous. Let's imagine the situation requires us to do a self-cross on the F1 offspring. Remember that self-cross refers to crossing between individuals of the same generation. So, it's the F1 offspring crossed with another F1 offspring. Since the two genes are located on different chromosomes, independent assortment will act on these two genes resulting in the production of four types of gametes by these heterozygous individuals. In this case, big T, big R, big T, small r, small t, big r, and small t, small r. To help you combine the alleles during fertilization to get F2 generation, build a Punnett square like this. Place all the alleles from one parent on the top row of the table, then place all the alleles from another parent on the leftmost column of the table. Then, slowly combine the alleles. First, remember to group the same letter together, T with T, R with R. Then, make sure that you put the capital letter at the front and small letter at the back, like this. After that, Write down the phenotypic ratio of the F2 generation. To do this, look at the first box here and determine its phenotype. The first one is tall and round, so write it down here. Then, begin to count how many tall and round in this Punnett square. Yes. 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 Yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, no, no. So there are nine tall and round. Next, check the next unmarked box and determine its phenotype, in this case, this one. It is tall and wrinkled. So count how many tall and wrinkled individuals in the Punnett square. Yes? Yes? No? No? Yes? No? No. So there are three tall and wrinkled individuals. Next, look at the next unmarked box and determine its phenotype. In this case, it's dwarf and round. Based on the Punnett square, there are three individuals who are dwarf and round. Lastly, 
Look at this individual. This individual has wolf and wrinkle phenotype. So there is only one. Therefore, we have the phenotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1.